1 Corinthians 12 and verse 1, and we'll begin, I'm, I'll read this in the Young's literal translation. Uh, it doesn't read very uh, smoothly and easily, but it's very accurate. That's why I'm doing it. And uh, the very first verse is one reason I'm using this translation is because in the King James and other translations, it says concerning spiritual gifts, and that's not accurate. Uh, this chapter is talking about more than gifts. It talks about ministries and operations and manifestations. And it's not just trying to be technical. It's a big key to understanding the chapter. And uh, uh, another thing is that a number of modern translations just absolutely get this chapter wrong. Their theology comes glaring through. And because they are not, they haven't experienced some of the things that this chapter is talking about, they change it and try to put it in terms that they understand. Well, that's not a translation. That's a paraphrase. Uh, I, and I don't know, you know, about your personal Bible reading and study, but I figure you uh, think similarly to me. I don't want somebody telling me what he meant. I want to know what he said, right? I got the author of the book inside me to tell me what he meant, right? Well, uh, a lot of modern translations will have changed the words trying to explain it to you because they have uh, tried to make all these gifts and manifestations of the Spirit natural. And they'll say that Tongues are just people that learn different languages. And gifts of healings are doctors and nurses. And, and they take all the, the, the spiritual things here and try to make them natural things. And that's just as wrong as can be. Amen. Thank God for good doctors and nurses. But that's gifts of healings is not talking about doctors and nurses. Yes. And it's great that people have learned languages. But... Uh, different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues has nothing to do with learning other languages. Yes. Hmm? Yes. And uh, do you understand why I'm saying this? Because uh, depending on what translation you're reading or paraphrase, uh, it, it may say any number of things. So check it out. And uh, uh, the Lord said he didn't want us ignorant concerning spiritual things so that's why we're taking the time and applying ourselves. Uh, we want to find out exactly what he said about this. He said, concerning spiritual things, brothers, I do not wish you to be ignorant. So by the grace of God, we're not going to be ignorant Amen. or ignorant or either. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're learning. Come on, say it out loud. We're, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm growing. What, what are you learning about? The things of the Spirit. The things of the Spirit. He said, you, you've known that you were nations apart from God unto dumb idols as you were led being carried away. This is such a, a tragedy, awful thing that billions of people on this planet are praying to gods who will never answer a prayer. They're dumb. They cannot speak. They pray to rocks and statues and they spin wheels and they count beads and is absolutely useless. Yeah. So I said, well, you need to have respect for other people's religions. I wouldn't be a real Christian if I did. Because right. Jesus said he is the only way to the Father. Did he say it or not? Yes. So well, you're just narrow-minded and saved. There's a broad way hmm? that you can be broad-minded and you can embrace all other religions and you can wind up lost. But, the, but Jesus said there's a straight and a narrow way and it leads to eternal life. Hallelujah. Salvation. He said, I give you to understand that no one in the Spirit of God speaking says Jesus is anathema or accursed. And no one's able to say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 
Now with that in mind, go with me over to 1 John. Let's go a little further with this. Why would you say that? Because the church at Corinth had a lot of manifestations of the Spirit. Let me say it like this. They had a lot of spiritual manifestations. <laughs> Not all of them were the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I should say, maybe say it like this. They had a lot of manifestations. Because <laughs> some of them were probably not even spiritual. They're probably just flesh. So they had flesh manifestations. They had Holy Spirit manifestations. And they had wrong spirit manifestations. And just because something is spiritual and real does not make it God. And that's what, that's what he's getting into. And when he said, no man, nobody speaking by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this would be like prophecy or tongues and interpretation, is going to say that Jesus is accursed. If the Holy Spirit is in manifestation and somebody's speaking by inspiration of the Spirit, it is going to honor Jesus. It is going to glorify Jesus. It's not going to say anything negative about Jesus. If something supposedly is, is the Spirit, but it's not respectful of Jesus, it's not the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. Period. And, uh, and he also said, if you are speaking by the Spirit of God, a wrong spirit's not going to say anything about Jesus being Lord, or having come in the flesh, or, or the, the virgin birth, or the incarnation. And, and you, you get this right here in 1 John Chapter 4, verse 1. 1 John 4 and 1. We're learning about spiritual things. We're, let's come on, say it out loud. I'm learning, I'm learning. About, the about the things of the Spirit. Amen. Why, why would I say that? Why would, I, why would I do that? Because you need participation from your spirit. Church is not supposed to be entertainment. We live in the entertainment age. And you can be so used to just plopping down in front of a screen and doing nothing. Well, the things of God don't work that way. It's not entertaining. You've got to participate Amen. with your spirit. You've got to be actively believing. And you're making a decision whether I'm receiving that or not Amen. the whole time. He said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, <laughs> but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Everybody say, try the spirits. Try the spirits. Try the spirits. <laughs> A friend of mine one time, he, he, said, he said, and that's not like Baskin Robbins, try the flavors. <laughs> try all 39 flavors. No, it's not try them all. The word is, is the same word that's translated uh, prove all things and hold fast that which is good that we looked at in 1 Thessalonians. It could also be translated test. Test. And that's what we read from 1 Thessalonians. It said uh, prove everything or test everything and hold fast that which is good. There, there are a couple of big things to learn about the gifts and manifestations of the Spirit. One of them is, you're not the only one who has the Spirit. Amen. Right? Amen. Other people have the Spirit. A lot of other people have the Spirit. <laughs> huh? And, uh, especially where our elders are concerned, and those that are anointed to lead, you, somebody that, that has more experience in these things, you want to pay attention to Amen. and listen to. And even though the Holy Spirit is perfect in, in his manifestation, the manifestation comes through imperfect vessels, us. And we can get something genuinely from him, and yet we could put our own interpretation on it. And part of it could be right and part of it could be wrong in a prophecy or a tongue and interpretation. You could genuinely get a revelation from him, 
but then you could uh, add your own thinking to it. Can you see what I'm talking about? And because of this human vessel element, uh, for instance, you know, depending on what kind of drinking vessel you've got, uh, the liquid in the vessel can take on a flavor from the vessel it's in. Hmm? Is that right? And that's, that has nothing to do with the liquid that was put in the vessel. It's just that the liquid picked up a flavor from, from being in the vessel or coming through the vessel. So we've got the Holy Spirit in us. He's perfect. He never gets it wrong. So why in the world would you test or judge manifestations of the Spirit because of the vessel it's coming through? Hmm? Is that okay? And why would you say, try the spirits, whether they are of God? Because many false prophets are gone into the world. There's a lot of folks saying, thus saith the Lord. And it's not all thus saith the Lord. Some of it's thus saith them. Other is a combination. Part of it was thus saith the Lord, and the other part was thus saith them. Other is thus saith the wrong spirit. Well, what did the Lord tell us to do about this? Judge it. Try it. Test it. Prove it. Any message you hear preached or taught, you're to test it. Anybody that ministers to you by the Spirit, a prophecy, a tongue and interpretation, a vision, a dream, any of these things, what are you supposed to do? Come on, help me out. What are you supposed to do? Anybody. I don't care if they're prophet so-and-so, apostle so-and-so. What do you do? You test it. Somebody say, test it. Look at your neighbor. Help them out. Say, test it. Test it. Test it. How do you test it? Number one, by the written word. What if you don't know the word? Well, then you'll be easily fooled. Which is why everybody at Faith Life Church reads their chapter every day, Monday through Friday. You say, well, I didn't know that. Well, you do now. You do now. So go back by the information area on your way out, and there's a little, in, uh, a little bookmark card. It shows you what chapter we're on. And we've been reading, uh, what, Galatians and Ephesians now. Man, you talk about some, and Philippians, you talk about some good reading. Oh, man, I mean, whoo. Somebody say, glory to God. Ephesians and now Philippi. Woo, woo, woo. Praise God. <laughs> Someone said, well, I, I read that. I didn't get that excited about it. You didn't read it right. That's right. You didn't read it right. <laughs> it's life. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit. They're what? Spirit. Did you hear that? Spirit. We're talking about things of the Spirit. His words are Spirit. And they are life. Thank you, Lord. The more ignorant you are of the Word, the, more easy, the, the, the easier it is for a wrong spirit to fool you and deceive you. Because you'll think, well, it's spiritual. It's real. And the enemy tries to pass himself off as God. He transforms himself into an angel of light. But he'll always contradict Scripture. <laughs> and he'll always contradict the Holy Spirit inside you. And so uh, it's not the reason we say, you know, read your chapter every day. It's not just a religious ritual. Your spirit needs to be fed. Just like your body needs to be fed. Your faith needs to be fed. And you need to learn what the Lord has said about all these different things so that when the enemy comes and tries to trick you and fool you, you do exactly what the master did. Anybody remember? Yes. The enemy came, 
And he pulled out the stops to tempt Jesus. Is that right? 40 days? 40 nights? How did Jesus deal with it? Come on, help me out. How did he? How did he? If anybody could have said, well, no, I don't need to quote all those scriptures. I'm the son of God. I can't. He didn't. What did he say? It is written. When the enemy tried to trick him, how did he prevent the enemy deceiving him? Come on, help me out. He quoted verbatim the written word. It is written. Well, then the devil starts quoting scriptures. He's a tricky cuss. He is. He'll quote them right and then interpret them wrong. Hmm? How in the world could you deal with that? Because you know other scriptures. What Jesus say? It is also written. You got to rightly divide the word. How are you going to rightly divide a scripture? With other scriptures, which you learned. Because you read your chapter. Every day. <laughs> Monday through Friday. How many have found something that had come up and you might have been initially puzzled by it and the Spirit of God brings Scripture to you? Yes. Maybe that you, when you were reading or when you were praying or you heard preaching or teaching somewhere sometime and that Scripture comes back up to you and you go, well, now hold on, that can't be right. Because, hmm? That's what he's talking about. First John 4, 1, believe not every spirit. Don't believe everything you hear. We, many Christians have been easy marks by con people because we train ourselves to trust. That's what faith is. Trust. To trust without seeing, without understanding, without knowing. That's faith. Yes, we trust God that way. Not everybody else. <laughs> kind of like I saw at an auto shop one time. It had a big sign on the back. It said, and it looked like on the, on the currency, it said, in God we trust. Bottom said, all others pay cash. <laughs> There's something to that. In God, we trust without reservation. Without seeing, without knowing, without understanding. If he says it, I don't care if it looks totally impossible. We're going to just say, yes, sir, we believe it. Right. If God said it, we believe it. Everybody else, we're going to check them out. Is that right? We're going to test it. We're going to prove it. Why? Because you ain't God, brother. <laughs> you ain't God, sister. We trust him. Without question. You're another deal. <laughs> so, so I thought we were supposed to love people. You know. Uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's right there. Anyway. Love people. Without. Unconditionally. Thank you Carrie. <laughs> We're to love people unconditionally. That is true. Love is not trust. You can love people and not trust them at all. Because they've been lying to you every other breath for the last three weeks. You'd be a fool if you trusted them. Doesn't mean you don't love them. Love is not trust. Trust is not love. Love and faith are two different things. Now they work together, they're connected. But you, where it comes to people, you do love unconditionally. You don't trust people unconditionally. You test everything. Did you see why I was trying to get to that word? Thank you, Lord. Keep reading. 1 John 4, 1 says, Believe not every spirit. Don't believe everything you hear. But do what? Try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 
And see, why would you say prophet? They are claiming, they are speaking by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They're claiming they got a revelation from God. They've got a dream. They've got a vision. But it's not the right, it's not the Holy Spirit. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. You believe in miracles. You believe in the virgin birth. You believe in the bodily, physical resurrection of the Lord Jesus and his soon return. And you glorify Jesus. Wrong spirits cannot help but be disrespectful. It's their nature. It comes out no matter how hard they try. And wrong spirits are not blessing spirits. They can't bless. They can only hurt and still kill and destroy. A right spirit, the Holy Spirit, is always going to magnify Jesus, glorify Jesus, glorify His coming, His manifesting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Him being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And a real manifestation of the Spirit is going to benefit the body. It's going to bless somebody. Going to help somebody. Well, there's a lot here, but if I camp here, how am I going to get to the other parts? <laughs> uh, he said in verse 4, You're of God, little children, and have overcome them. All these wrong spirits, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. You don't have to be, yeah, they're, they're, they're evil spirits, there's wrong activity, but you don't have to be afraid of any of it. Because the big one is inside you. They're afraid of him. They're, they'll try not to let you know that, but every wrong spirit is afraid of him. You remember the spirits cried out when Jesus came in the power of their spirit. They said, we know who you are. Have you come to torment us from before the time? They were scared of him. And the Bible said, if you resist the devil, what will happen with you? Even with you. He'll, why would he run away? Why? Because he's afraid of that same spirit who's on you, who was also on Jesus. Somebody say, glory to God. The bigger one's in you. The greater one's in you. He said, uh, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. The world hears them. We're of God. He that knows God hears us. He that's not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth. That's another name for the Holy Spirit. And the spirit of error. Every day in life, no matter what we're hearing, even if people are quoting scripture, we must be looking to the Lord to help us test it, discern it, try it. Is it the spirit of truth or is it the spirit of error? How are you going to find out? You got the book, Amen. right? Amen. The, the better you know the book, the harder you are to fool, Amen. to trick. So friend, put your nose in this book. Amen. It's life and death. You don't want to be deceived. You don't want to be tricked. The devil is extremely tricky. Subtle. Don't, don't under, underestimate him. Uh, he's been around for we don't even know how long. He's tricked human beings for millennia after millennia. He's very, very good at it. Jesus himself, how did he prevent the enemy from tricking him? Come on, help me out. If anybody could have done it differently, just based on who they are and what they knew, it would have been him. He didn't do it that way. What did he say? Come on, help me out. What did he say? It is written. How could he say it is written? Because he knew. It was written. He knew it. And then when scripture was misquoted and misapplied to him, he knew other scripture. Is that right? It is also written. Oh, I, I know I'm waving my hands and lifting my voice, but it is, I don't want you tricked. I don't want you duped. Are you going to keep on putting your nose in this book? Are you? Keep on, keep on, keep on. There's always new things to see that you haven't seen before. Always. Always. And he'll open your eyes to see it. Go with me back to 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. I think we made it all the way to what? Verse 2? <laughs> Y'all laughing at me. 
1 Corinthians 12, 2, and verse 3. Actually, we made it to verse 3, didn't we? And we talked about that. Verse 4. There are diversities of gifts. Now here, obviously, he is talking about gifts. But the same Spirit. Verse 5. There are diversities of ministrations and the same Lord. So here he's not specifically talking about gifts. We might say ministries. We get our word administration from this and also ministries. But it's the same Lord. Of course, he's the head of the church. He's head over all the ministries. Verse 6, and there are diversities of workings. And this is the word we get our word energy from and power. The different gifts, but the same spirit. Different ministries, but the same Lord. Different operations of power, but the same God. Who works all in all. And to each. Now that's talking about each individual in the body. Everybody say to each one. one. Are you one of the each one? Are you in the body? To each one. Each has been given the manifestation of the spirit for profit. Or the King James says to profit with all. To every one of us. Every one of us can and should have manifestations of the Holy Spirit. That's why he's, this whole chapter is devoted to not being ignorant of these things. Because every believer is to have manifestations of the Spirit. Not just preachers and teachers. Each one. Somebody say each one. Each one. Every one. For to one, through the Spirit, has been given a word of wisdom. Not the gift of wisdom. A word of wisdom. To another, a word of knowledge, not the gift of knowledge, a word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. And the reason I started talking about this the way I did is because some people try to take this and go, you know, some people are very wise. So God gave them the gift of wisdom. No, no, no. It's not the gift of wisdom. It's a word of wisdom, and it's not something somebody developed by living long and being wise. It's a supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit revealing a word, just a part, of the wisdom of God to you that you did not learn, you did not develop. Same thing with the word of knowledge. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. And to another, faith in the same Spirit. Now, Again, this is not just the gift of faith. Some translations call it special faith. It's a faith beyond your faith. God is a God of faith. He himself functions by faith. I know uh, I'm getting ready to get back into taping faith school again. And uh, in in the first parts of it, I'm and praying about, Lord, what, what should we teach on this and, and how, where we should we go? I thought I'd start off with uh, what faith is. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's on the website. You can go to it. It won't cost you anything. It's class after class about faith. And uh, I asked the Lord to help us to teach this in the most basic fashion that somebody that just got saved yesterday could get it easily, but somebody that's been walking with the Lord for 40 years would get something too. He can do that, you know. And so I'm about to teach on what faith is, and the Lord said, no, got to back up. The first thing is why faith? And the answer is, that's because that's how he himself operates. And that's what he has told, didn't he tell us, the just shall live by by faith and walk by faith. God himself Created the heavens and the earth by faith. He conceived it in himself and through his faith and spoken words brought it into existence. (laughs) Now no matter what you may have heard or thought, this is how it all got here. And you 
are made in his likeness and image. And are to function like him. The scripture said, be ye imitators of God as dear children. What do you mean? He creates planets. I didn't say you had tried to start creating planets. Start closer to home. <laughs> huh? But it's a measure of his faith. And it works just like he functions. You believe it in your heart. You say it with your mouth. And creative power is released. Amen. And I know this, people think that sounds nuts. Wait, you either believe the Bible or you don't. Hmm? Yes. This is how Genesis tells us and how the book of Hebrews in the New Testament tells us that the heavens and the earth were created. God said. Anybody read Genesis or not? God did what? God what did he do? Said. Didn't say he waved his magic wand. What did he do? God said, light be, <laughs> and light was. My, my. You know, past this life, I, I'd like for the Father to show us some video of that. What do you think? Maybe let, let's ask him. Say, Father, could you show us that? I, I think he can. Show us how, what happened, how that worked. Well, you and I are to function by faith. And it's sad that so many people don't even acknowledge faith or know that they need to live by faith or walk by faith. But if you feed your faith and use your faith, it grows. It gets stronger. But God has special manifestations of the Spirit where He can drop faith in you in an area beyond your faith. And we talked about that last week. I don't want to get stirred up about it because I'll preach again and... <laughs> Take up all our time on it again. What's the next thing? And to another, gifts of healings. Say it out loud. Gifts yes. of healings. Yes. Now again, Young's literal. I like it because it's accurate. Both of these words are plural. If you look them up. Gifts is plural. And healings, plural also. In the same spirit. God is the great physician. Always has been. Always will be. He, a big part of Jesus' ministry involved ministering healing. A lot of what is recorded in the four gospel accounts that he did was ministering healing. And um, I like something that uh, my father in the faith, Kenneth E. Hagin, said. He said, uh, healing... All healing is the same in essence, but not the same in manifestation or degree. And that's what you'll see here in uh, gifts of healings. It's the same power of God that heals, but it's not the same in manifestation or degree. I know uh, he, something else he said the Lord said to him personally one time. He said, when any of my people have an operation, a surgery, a procedure, he said, always ask me to speed up the healing working in them. Always ask me. Well, you know, there, you hear people say, well, I, I don't believe in all that. I don't believe in healing. Well, ask them if they say that. Did you ever skin your knee? You ever scraped your elbow? Yeah. Well, let me see it. Oh, no, it's healed. It's what? What happened? Oh, well, that's different. No, it's not. God put a certain amount of healing in the body to, to maintain itself. Well, where that came from is a lot more. God can increase the manifestation of healing that's working in your body twofold, fivefold, a hundredfold. And in cases like that, that's when you see some things that only take a couple of minutes. Amen. And they're done. Amen. It might have healed up, you know, might have taken it six weeks to heal up normally. But with God's increased power working in the body, because people asked him and believe, we, uh, we, the pastoral staff, all of us around here, we do this on a regular basis. We pray for our people and, and if folks let us know, even if I'm out of town or something, they let me know some of our people are having a procedure. Uh, we, we join faith. And we ask it. 
You know, you don't, you don't even have to be in the same country. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. Lord, we ask you, but I'll just tell you how I pray. Lord, we pray your peace on our brother and sister and their family. We ask your hand on the surgeon, the doctors, everybody assisting. We pray, ask your hand on their equipment and on their instruments. Help them to get good rest the night before. Amen. Quicken their mind. Keep them back from making any mistakes, doing anything they shouldn't do. Anything that they don't know about, reveal it to them. Guide their eyes, their minds, their hands. And Lord, we ask you afterwards, speed up the healing process working in that body. Amen. Cause them to heal up uh, completely and perfectly and supernaturally quickly. Amen. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So you release faith. Now we're expecting that. That's right. We're expecting that. And have, have we seen it? Have we seen it, Rob? Have we seen it? Craig, have we seen it? We've seen it over and over and over and over again. So you pray that way over yourself, over your family members, on anybody uh, else. That, and, and of course, it's better if they'll agree with you. <laughs> but uh, that's healing. And it can be an increased measure of healing, but there can even be things beyond that. Said out loud, gifts, gifts. Of, healings. of healings. Now, why would he say gifts of healings? Because in one sense, all healing is a gift. It's bought and paid for by Jesus. He took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. He carried our pains. By his stripes, we're healed. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. It's a gift. Yeah, again, listen to that phrase. It is the same in essence. Not the same in manifestation or degree. Look with me in the book of Acts, please. You, you'll find all these manifestations of the Spirit in the book of Acts, all nine of them. You'll find them more than once. In, in Acts, the, let me see, eighth chapter, Acts chapter 8 and verse 5. Everybody okay? Yes. Now let me, uh, let me prepare you for something on this. When you talk about the gifts and manifestations of the Spirit, faith comes. Yes. When faith comes, guess what else happens? They begin to manifest. <laughs> when people act on them. <laughs> We've already had some manifestations of the other gifts of the Spirit previously, in previous weeks. And so we are having, and I'm sure there'll be things that I don't know about. I don't need to know about everything. But uh, uh, keep your uh, ready button turned on. All right. All right? Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. Now, a lot of, today, people, most people wouldn't call it that because they've only developed their minds and don't acknowledge spiritual things. They would call it people with mental problems and all other kind of things. But uh, many times, spiritual influences are involved when people are tormented, vexed mentally and emotionally. And many, get this now, many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Significant. It didn't say everybody, but it said many. And notice it's talking about in specific areas. Well, palsy has to do with paralysis. And if you look up the word, it basically means, now this kind of sounds kind of strange, but it is a literal definition, loosed from the side. And it describes body parts that have no strength. And you, you'll see 
the term struck with palsy. And when you see from a side, it, it reminds me of a stroke that left a side paralyzed or partially. And then lame has to do with not being able to walk with proper strength. It has to do with limping or, you know, not, not having the ability to walk and run normally. So these are in two areas that are not exactly the same and yet they have similarities. Why would you point out these two? What about the other thing? What about blind eyes? What about deaf ears? What about these other things? Why would it mention these? This is an example of gifts of healings. Specific air. How many gifts of healings are there? I don't know. I'd like to know. How many? I've heard conjecture. But to me, if you don't see scripture on it, it's just conjecture. But there are different manifestations of healing in different areas. And in this town, and this man ministering and preaching the gospel, compared to other things that were happened, there was a, a, an extra manifestation of people that got healed from paralysis or partial paralysis, from people that had strokes, and people that had uh, lameness. Because this is what the Bible brings out and points out instead of mentioning something else. So it's indicative of a gift or gifts of healings working in this man's, through this man's ministry. Because you see more of that than other things. Not that it's not God's will to heal the other things, but they're gifts. It's a gift beyond just making healing available to everybody by faith. It's an extra manifestation of healing. And it was also a sign and a wonder. Many taken with palsies, and you could say, and many that were lame were healed. Didn't say they received their healing. It says they were healed. Did you get that? And there was great, what? Joy. Joy in the city. Hallelujah. I guess so. Does the Lord want us to have great joy? Yes. yes. People getting healed cause great joy. It gives glory to God. Amen. Say it out loud, gifts, gifts. Of, healings. of healings. Go with me over to the 28th chapter of Acts. Let's look at another instance. Gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. In Acts 28, after Paul and those that were with him got spared from that hurricane, after they were washed on shore on this island, after Paul got snake bit <laughs> and didn't die, can God sustain you? Yes. No matter where you are. Yes. Even if other people make wrong decisions that affect you, which is the owner of the ship did, and it affected Paul. But God still spared Paul and also gave him everybody that was with him. Amen. You know, people may not realize it, but if you're a real man or woman of faith and praying or led, they may not realize it, but they should be glad you got on that plane. That's right. Praise God. Amen. Or that train or in the car. Friends, it matters so much that we are led every day. No matter what plans you may have made, if you get a check, don't override it. If it costs you money, don't override a check. This is one of the big ways the Lord protects you and keeps you. Don't just quote a scripture and ignore the leading of the Lord. That's another subject. Acts 28, did you get there? Paul made it through the storm. Made it through the shipwreck. Made it through the snake bite. And verse 7 says they're on this island. 
And this, in the same court, he said the people received them. Uh, and there was a chief man named Publius on the island. He was well known. And he received them and lodged them three days courteously. Don't you know they were glad to get dried out and get something to eat? They hadn't eaten anything in weeks. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and other translations say dysentery. So he's in a bad way. And Paul entered in and did what? Prayed. Prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Now because of that, some people you know, have tried to say, well, yeah, no, the, the apostle, the, the 12, had that kind of power. Well, he's not one of the 12. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, and Paul. Okay, who else? <laughs> no. They said, well, he, he had that power. He could do it. No, no. This is an, uh, a manifestation of gift of healing. Why? It didn't say Paul preached to the man. The man may have been unconscious. Nothing is said about the man's faith. Nothing is said about him receiving any healing. Well, yeah, well, uh, you know, some of these men had these kind of gifts and they could do that. No, no, no. No man or woman is the healer. And nobody has a gift of healing that they can just go heal people at will. If somebody said they did, they lied. It's not true. But the Spirit of God, if you'll uh, get this, what's the first thing he did? He found out that Publius's dad is in a bad way. He didn't say, well, man, I got the gift. Show me. I'll, t I'll fix it. No, 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 no. Jesus himself said, I can of my own self do nothing. Didn't he say that? He said, I only do what I see the Father do, I only say what I hear him say. I can of my own self do nothing. Jesus never personally took credit for one healing or one message. Do you know this or not? Why? Because he's functioning as a man. He's operating like other men. What happened? Why would Paul go in and start praying? A key to the manifestations of the Spirit is being full of the Spirit. And a key to being full of the Spirit is prayer and speaking in tongues. It, it, yielding yourself to the Spirit in praying and speaking in tongues. Somebody said, well, well, you don't know if Paul spoke in tongues. I absolutely do know he spoke in tongues. He said so himself. In chapter 14, he said he spoke in tongues more than that whole Corinthian bunch, and he's having to give them correction about it. Amen. He must have got up talking in tongues and went to bed talking in tongues. All the early churches, the church at Ephesus, the church at Philippi, the church at Galatia, the church at Rome, the churches at Corinth, all tongue-talking people. Amen. All of them. All of them. It belongs to every believer. And if you yield your tongue, it's the steering wheel of your life. If you yield your tongue to the Spirit, you've gone a long ways toward yielding your whole being. Amen. Brother Hagin said this also. He said, I found in my own personal life, the more I pray in tongues, speak in tongues, praise and worship in tongues, the more of the other manifestations I have in my life. The less I pray and speak in tongues, the less of the other, talking about these nine manifestations I have in my life. There's a connection. So what, what did Paul do? So this is obviously not something he could just go on and flip a switch and do. He couldn't just do this at will. What did he do? He knelt down. He starts praying. Something happened while he was praying. God gave him something. <laughs> what did he give him? Well, it's a, it's a gift. Uh, it's just like what happened with Peter and John we talked about last week when they walked up and they saw that man and he asked for a handout and, and, and something happened. Because they walked by that man who knows how many times and days. But on this day, 
Peter looked at him and said, hadn't got money on me, but I got something. Where, where did he get it? When did he get it? Must not have had it days ago. Such as I have, give I you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up, get up, rise. And he grabbed him and pulled him up. It was a gift. It was a faith. If it had just been Peter and John's faith, they would have done this months ago. Maybe even before that. But this was a gift of faith. Beyond. And here is a gift of healing because Paul is praying and then something dropped in him. He just gets up and walks over to the man, puts hands on him, and the man's healed. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know if the man was even conscious. Nothing said about the man's faith or about him receiving. There's a difference between receiving healing and healing being ministered to you. Healing being ministered or receiving healing. Somebody say gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. Oh, somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He went in there and he prayed. Somebody say pray. Now, if, you're, if you say, well, I want, I want more of these manifestations. If you're really serious, you'll get to praying. You'll pray more. Not begging and pleading. Just praying, and you need to know how to pray in the Spirit about these things. Praying and making yourself available. And don't just say you only want it for you. You want these things to happen. You don't care who God uses. You just want to see them in the body. You want to see them in the church. You want to see them happen for believers. And God even does some sign and wonder things for non-believers. This is part of what he does as signs and wonders to draw people in. We get hungry for them. The scripture said covet earnestly the best gifts. You get hungry for them. You get to praying about them. And you get more than three people in the church doing that. Amen. That's where things really begin to change. And you begin to see more of these manifestations. More and more and more. But you know most folks have only developed their intellect. And don't do much praying, if any. And don't hunger for these things. Which is why we're talking about it. Amen. Notice the difference now in this and the next verse. Paul goes in. What's the first thing he does? He prays. Why would you need to pray? Because Paul cannot heal the man. you with me or not? No matter what he wants to do, he cannot heal this man. He, he's blessed. Publius, Publius, is that his name? Publius has treated them so nice. He's given them some dry clothes. He's put food in them. Give them a place to sleep. He loves people anyway. He wants to see this man healed. Why didn't he just go heal him? Because he can't. What he can do is make himself available to the Holy Spirit. Come, can you see that? He can make himself available. These kind of things have happened through his, through his ministry. He has seen them. He knows. So he gets down and he prays. It doesn't tell us how long he prayed. Could have been a while. Could have been just a few minutes. I don't know. But something happened. Something dropped in him. Something came on him. And he knows, okay, I got this. He, he goes over there. He lays hands on the man. It says, and healed him, implying he laid hands on him and ministered healing to him. Can you see this? Even if the man was unconscious, he ministered healing. And healing anointing came on this man. In the bed, came into him, and what happened? Come on, what happened? What happened? It was a gift. Yeah, healing's a gift, just generally speaking, but this is beyond that. This is a gift of the grace and goodness and mercy of God. God wants us healed. He wants us delivered so much. Not only did he just provide it for us, but he does special things in addition to and ministries. So, uh, the next verse, when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island. What do you think? How long did it take for word to get around, right? About what happened. Everybody knew Publius. And probably everybody knew about his, about his daddy. Been down, been sick. Probably figured he's going to die real soon. He was in a bad, bad case. And he's what? 
He, what? You saw him down at the market? What? I thought he had died. No, he didn't die. What? He, he ate beans and bread with us the other night. What? What? So next thing you know, everybody in the island that had anything wrong, Hallelujah. huh? they showed up and what? It didn't say Paul laid hands on them and healed them. What did it say? They were healed. See the language? They were healed. What do you think a preacher did when a big crowd showed up at the house? He preached to these people. Well, what's the number one thing they need? Yeah, maybe they need to be healed, but the number one thing they need is to be saved. They, they need to be born again. They need to miss hell and make heaven. Come on. You know, they, they, so he, you, you don't have to wonder. Paul preached to these people. And when he preached the gospel, he not only preached that Jesus took their sins, he preached that Jesus took their infirmities and bore their sicknesses. They their faith was involved. Different languages used. Paul's, excuse me, published, publicist, uh, yeah. Publius's father was healed, but then these were healed, they received. Can you say amen or amen. I'll think about it or amen. praise be to God. Praise be to God. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. For the gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for ministries. Go, go with me back to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And see, so th there's a lot of light here. If you skip down to the end of the chapter, 1 Corinthians 12, Verse 27, many have called uh, 1 Corinthians 12 the gifts of the Spirit chapter, but that's not accurate. In fact, at least half the chapter is talking about the body of Christ. That's not a change of subject because the gifts and the, minis the ministries and the operations and the manifestations or through the church. In verse 27, he said, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. Some indeed, God did set in the assembly, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, afterwards powers, afterwards gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. You'll notice the evangelist is not mentioned in this list of ministry gifts, like you'll see it over in Ephesians, and yet it's here. Evangelist ministry includes healing. I know not all have thought that, but it does. Helpings, governings, this includes pastoral and heading and, le and leading churches. Diverse kinds of tongues, keep reading, are all apostles. What's the answer? No. no. Are all prophets? No. no. Are all teachers? No. no. Are all powers? Now this has to do with governing, which would include pastoral. Keep going. Have all gifts of healings. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Again, the answer is no. And because of that, some people have seized on this and say, well, see that? Not everybody speaks in tongues. No, no, no. He's talking about ministries. A ministry of tongues and interpretation. He's talking about a ministry of healing. Can you see all these are ministries? Yes. Let me back up. Back up verse 29. Is apostle a ministry? Is prophet a ministry? Teachers a ministry? Well, verse 30, then gifts of healings has to do with ministry. Ministry. And tongues and interpretation 
there's a ministry of tongues and interpretation. We don't see it as much as we should, but it is. Yes, that's, right. that, that's not referring to a believer speaking in tongues in their own private devotions and prayer. And it's not referring to any believer receiving healing by faith. These are ministries. Can you see one reason I keep saying all of this is not about gifts? Can you see that now? There are gifts, but there are also ministries. And then there are operations. All of them, and all of it can be called manifestations. Verse 31. Desire earnestly the better gifts. And yet a far excelling way do I show you, and he begins to talk about love. Of course, God is love. And that is the, motiva- the, the, the correct motivation for wanting to see these things and experience these things is not just so you can say, wowie zowie, I had an experience. No, love wants to see gifts of healings so that people that are in need get healed. Yes. Is that right? Not just me, but, but all of us. Right? We want to see work in the miracles, not just so we can go, wow, did you feel the power? We, there, there are some things that cannot be fixed other than a miracle. Right? I mean, there, there are people who need body parts replaced. There are things that people are born without. There are, I mean, that's not healing. It'd take a miracle to get that in there. Well, we just happen to know somebody. Come on, say, I know. I, Somebody says, well, that would take a miracle. Yeah, and you know somebody. You know somebody that can do a miracle. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know in my own life, I have experienced uh, manifestations of some of these things. And some of them you don't, you don't, uh, it takes a little while to see. Don't be in a hurry to put a label on yourself. You know, you can put any kind of label on an empty tin can. Doesn't put anything in the can. Hmm? (laughs) And if you're a, a young pear tree in the winter season with no leaves, you look like a little bare scrub bush, There's no need in you trying to tell everybody, I'm a pear tree. I'm a pear tree. I'm telling you, I bear the most luscious pears. And and other trees may look at you and go, I don't see a pear. You're a scrub bush. The, The pear tree can wear itself out, can frustrate, can get mad at everybody, can get hurt, offended, et cetera. Or, or, or. Just wait. Be a good pear tree. Be a faithful pear tree. Get your nutrition from the ground. Get your light from the sun. Drink in the water from the rain. Right? And one day. One day. It may take a little while, but one day you won't need a sign that says pear tree. You won't need to tell anybody you are a pear tree. Everybody will know. How will they know? Because you got pears, pears, pears galore. Everybody will know. That's a pear tree. You won't have to say it. They'll say it. So don't be in a hurry to put a tag on yourself, to put a title on yourself. I'm a this, I'm a that. God uses me this way or that. Don't, just don't. Follow him fully. Yield to him when he gives you something. And if you do that over a period of time, it'll begin to be evident. Some things will just begin to be evident. I know uh, we've had a lot of healings in, uh, in our ministry, and I'm so thankful for that. I, I had the privilege of working at Brother Hagin's ministry in their healing school for a number of years, and we taught healing every morning and every afternoon. And, uh, you know, when you immerse yourself into something, you grow in it. It helps you. And uh, we've seen a lot of... Uh, a lot of healings. You hear healing testimonies on a regular basis around here, don't you? And that's because of people, their, their word, the word feeding their faith, their faith rising up. But God also does special things. And, and sometimes, you know, if uh, um, you yield to the Spirit, uh, the manifestation of the Spirit begins to happen, uh, He'll show you things that He's doing. 
And doesn't mean you can turn this off and on, but, but he'll show you things. And I've noticed in my own life, uh, there have been more in, uh, than once, time and time again, things healed in internal organs and with inflammation and internal things. It has come up again and again and again and again. And uh, it, it's taken me years to see this, but that's something I'll see. In our ministry, the Lord will bring it up to me, and I'll, I'll call it out. But that doesn't mean that other things are not available, and that God's not doing other things. Can you see? He does special things, he, and He'll do some things to stir up your faith. And if somebody gets healed and uh, from some of those things, and if somebody's sitting beside them with something else, they go, "Well, hey, if God will do that, right? Why well, won't He?" And He will. And that's one of the reasons He does it. But he'll do some special things for a few to stir up the faith of all. And you don't have to have something called out or specially ministered to you to receive a healing. Every believer, healing belongs to you. Jesus took your infirmities. He bore your sicknesses. He carried your pains, and at any time and any place without any teaching or preaching or without any special prayer, you can believe you receive it and lay hold on it with your faith and can receive a healing. One of the signs that Mark 16 that Jesus said would follow believers, not just preachers, believers, is that they would lay hands on the sick and the sick would recover. You don't have to have any kind of special ministry or any kind of gift of the Spirit. You just do it in faith. Amen. And if you do it in faith and they receive it in faith, a healing can happen. Yes. Can you see that God is the healer? Amen. He wants healing so much that He has just provided multiple ways for healing to be ministered and healing to, re to be received. Amen. Stand on your feet, everybody.